Hello everyone and welcome back to Arctic Retro. In this video I'm going to take a look at this one. It's a Commodore 1701 CRT monitor. The monitor is working, I have tested it briefly, it uh, showed the picture, but the sound, the audio from it is very poor, very low, and uh, also um, yeah, these potentiometers for adjusting the pictures is uh, very scratchy, seems like, and uh, yeah, both picture and audio quality is uh, not the best, so I thought I'll take a look at it now and see if we can fix any of that. But before I begin, I just want to show you this. <laughs> I found uh, the same uh, monitor on eBay and it sells for uh, 500 US dollars. That's crazy, isn't it? <laughs> before I continue, I just want to take the opportunity to thank my sponsor, PCBWay. They are sponsoring this video. PCBWay produces a very high quality PCBs for affordable prices. I have used them many times myself. In addition, they also provide services like CNC machining, 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication and injection molding. Right now they have a campaign where you can get up to 60% off from flex and rigid flex PCBs. Just visit PCBWay.com and get an instant quote on that right now. Also check out their aluminium PCB offerings. So head over to PCBWay.com to check out their services. Now back to the video. Alright, let's take a closer look at uh, this monitor. It is uh, quite heavy. <laughs> Looks alright, it's a bit dirty and uh, yeah, dusty. But uh, everything is... Uh, all right, I mean, this lid is um, attached, it's not broken. I'm gonna hook it up to a machine and test it uh, in a little bit. The 1701 and its brother, the 1702, uh, are almost identical, although they are different inside. Um, they were actually made for the Condor 64 and uh, that's why it has the same colors as the Commodore 64. Uh, this was um, produced in the beginning of the 80s, I think. I'm not really sure about the year. Maybe we find some date codes uh, on it. And it was used uh, also with the WIC-20. This monitor has composite uh, video input and uh, audio input. And also it has uh, separate chroma and luma. And, uh, Therefore, it's uh, perfect for uh, using with the uh, Commodore 64. So I bought this monitor um, along with a Commodore 64 machine. And uh, yeah, I briefly tested it. I wrote some notes, bad uh, audio, needs recapping, scratchy pots, test it okay. Okay, let's uh, hook it up to one of my Commodore 64s. This is a Commodore 64C, so it uh, doesn't match uh, the color, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna use this one. So if you're gonna use composite uh, video, then you have to use uh, the contact on the front. If you're gonna use uh, Luma and Chroma, which uh, essentially is uh, the same as S video and gives a better picture, then you use uh, these ones on the back and you select uh, which kind of uh, signal you're using, front, rear. So this monitor was not made for being used with the Amiga. The Amiga has RGB and if you gonna use uh, this one on an Amiga you have to use uh, composite. Besides that there isn't much here. There's a couple of holes uh, where you can adjust some stuff. This is of course a European model. It's uh, is a PAL model. It's running on a 
220 volts, 50 hertz. All right, before I start, uh, I'm just gonna come uh, with a warning. I am gonna open this uh, monitor, obviously, and uh, yeah, that is dangerous because these kinds of uh, monitors have uh, both high voltage capacitors and a very high voltage CRT tube and this can actually kill you. So don't work on this if you don't know what you're doing. I think I know a, a little bit at least, so I am taking the chance. So I turned on the monitor and yeah, it comes with a lot of sound, scratchy sound uh, when you turn it on. I'm not sure if you can hear it. Let's... Uh, yeah. So that's one of the issues. Yeah, the picture doesn't look too bad, actually. Of course, it's very hard to film a CRT screen, but I think I managed to adjust uh, the camera now, so uh, at least we can uh, we can see what uh, we have. In reality, the picture is not as light as you can see it now. If I adjust the camera so that it makes it um, look like the real thing, it will start flickering like that, so yeah. <laughs> Before, when I turn the machine off, the monitor started to uh, crackle and made a lot of noises. Seems to have settled down now. Now here it should have music. But uh, there's nothing. Oh, yeah. Oops, <laughs> sorry. Well, <laughs> no, it suddenly, well, no, it suddenly makes uh, good, uh, <laughs> good audio here. <laughs> So it seems to be a little bit unstable. Yeah, that's not too bad. Yeah, actually the sound now is kind of good, I think. <laughs> Has a good sound, a good bass. Yeah, now the sound suddenly turned low again. I have the volume to the max and I can barely hear it. All right, so the monitor works, but it's uh, so and so, a little bit scratchy, and uh, it uh, needs a little bit of uh, restoration. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I have already ordered uh, all of the caps, the electrolyte capacitors that uh, this monitor uses, and I'm gonna replace them all, and also gonna service all the movable parts, the potentiometers and the switches, and uh, yeah, get this monitor to work better and to uh, prolong its life and uh, make it shine again, I guess. <laughs> so it's kind of big and bulky, this monitor, and it's very heavy, and uh, it's kind of hard to film what I'm doing because I have to stand here uh, on my, uh, bench but uh, I'll try to show you uh, first thing I'm gonna take off the back cover and it has uh, yeah five six screws around there's one there too and that's uh, and there's one there holding this panel here and uh, yeah opening this is dangerous so uh, we need to uh, make sure that uh, the CRT is uh, discharged because before I do anything inside it. That was uh, seven screws. Now this lifts right up and the power lead is um, held by a clip here. So just need to release that. Yeah, and the speaker. Oops, there it goes. <laughs> that was not my plan. My plan was to release the speaker, but uh, yeah, it released itself. Um, this part is also loose, so the speaker is connected with two uh, contacts here. I'll just pull them out, and uh, yeah, this plastic part I'm gonna clean up. That's the inside of a 1701, and uh, the thing we must avoid touching is um, this high voltage cable here that comes from the flyback transformer. This is the deflection yoke, it has a lot of uh, adjustments. I'm not really sure if I'm gonna 
touch those because I simply don't have any experience in adjusting uh, monitors like that. Maybe uh, that's kind of the things that Adrian Black does in uh, Adrian's digital basement. He's a master at uh, restoring old CRTs and uh, he knows his stuff. So the goal of this video is to clean up the inside and uh, replace all the electrolyte capacitors and there's uh, uh, three different uh, PCBs that has electrolyte capacitors. This is the neck board and uh, the main board is uh, down there and uh, here's uh, some board there as well. This one doesn't have any electrolytes. It has a couple of plastic caps and uh, yeah all the potentiometers needs to be cleaned up with some contact cleaner and they are in the front here so we need to pull out the whole thing and uh, free up the PCBs so that we can uh, replace the caps and clean them up. I need to discharge the CRT and uh, some monitors might have a bleeder resistor that uh, actually do the discharging uh, for you but um, I'm not really sure if this has it and also you could just leave it off for a couple of days and then it will probably be di discharged by itself. I'm not really sure, I wouldn't rely on that, but um, one thing you can do is use a screwdriver and um, connect a wire to ground and then poke under the anode cap there and uh, discharge the CRT like that. Ideally, if you're gonna discharge a CRT, you make sure that you are not grounded yourself, that you're not touching anything that is connected to ground or standing on anything connected to ground. And I am standing on a wooden floor here, so I would guess it's safe. I'm gonna use this screwdriver here and poke it under there while I connect a wire to it and connect that wire to the chassis ground. I prepared this uh, thick wire here. It has uh, alligator clips in both ends. So the other end is then uh, on the, the screwdriver. Make sure it's uh, good uh, contact. Uh, bare metal, it's a little bit uh, dirty screwdriver. And then we're gonna push this under the anode cap. If there still is a charge, then it should uh, be a pop when you touch the metal. <laughs> so I'm kind of nervous uh, even if I am doing this. I am, um, yeah, I feel like uh, it's a little bit dangerous and uh, yeah, let's go for it. I didn't hear anything. So yeah, I guess it was discharged after all. Okay, there was a little pop. <laughs> I think maybe it was just uh, the screwdriver slipping on the edge there. Okay, I think we're good. Uh, I read that you should actually do it again in a couple of hours because uh, there could be a buildup of a charge inside the tube. The big capacitors can also have uh, some charge. I'm gonna discharge them just by touching with some metal uh, when I take out uh, the board. All right, it's time to start uh, disassembling this thing. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna start by taking off this uh, neck board here. Need to be careful because the neck of a CRT can be fragile. I don't wanna have any cracks or anything <laughs> and destroy this uh, monitor. This one just pulls straight out. Oh, it's kind of stuck, yeah. And there's a lot of wires going to this, I'm gonna take off this ground at least and then I can uh, replace the single electrolyte capacitor on the, this one that is uh, there. Just gonna lay it down there and uh, desolder that cap. A little bit of uh, contact cleaner. Then a little general cleaning is uh, always good. So as you can see, it's kind of dirty, but uh, yeah, acceptable. There's a bunch of uh, adjustment uh, pots there. Just gonna flush them a little bit with some contact cleaner. 
not gonna turn them because um, then it might do something with the adjustment, which I don't know much about. <laughs> now I'm gonna take out the, the main board and it is, um, yeah, inside this <laughs> case, there's a couple of screws here to, um, I think you can slide the whole thing out like that. But before that, I almost forgot, I'm gonna solder out this uh, cap here. My desoldering uh, station doesn't reach over here, so I'm using this pen. It's a little bit difficult to reach when the camera is in the way. And uh, that's a uh, 10 microfarad, 250 volts. Let's see if it has any charge in it. Nope. Here's brand new caps from uh, DigiKey I just ordered. Yeah, same value, different size. Then some cleaning on the solder side uh, of the board. I just use uh, alcohol here. There's a lot of old uh, flux leftovers. <laughs> to remove the main board and uh, move the whole mechanism backwards, uh, there's three screws here in the front. That needs to come out. So now the whole thing can be dragged out, I think. Yeah. There's of course a few wires that needs to be removed in order to get this out. Contacts. So I guess this is uh, the power supply board then. Wow, there's actually a missing screw there. There too. Only two screws, maybe they saved a little bit on that. Luckily all the wires are connected with um, contacts. And uh, yeah, so in order for not to do a mistake when I assemble this again, I mark this as the one on the top. <laughs> The other ones have a different color, so no need to mark them. Where is stuck? Come on. These two are actually soldered in, so there's a contact down there. Just gonna pull it straight up. All right, now the board is free. We can inspect it, clean it up, and replace those big caps there. These are 330 microfarad, 200 volts. Got new here from uh, DigiKey. Uh, these ones are quite expensive. <laughs> and they're a little bit smaller as well. <laughs> but it's the same value. When you order capacitors for a project like this, it's important to get the, obviously the size, uh, the correct value. Uh, that's the most important in farad and uh, volts. You can go a little bit above uh, the original if you want, uh, but uh, also important is to get the correct uh, pin width because uh, that can be different from uh, type to type. These big uh, high voltage caps can be dangerous if they have a charge. Uh, I see there's some big uh, resistors here, probably to bleed off uh, the charge of those. So it's probably safe, but anyway, I'll just uh, short them out like this with a screwdriver. If they have a charge, then it will uh, make a little spark, I guess. <laughs> so no charge there. So these pins are probably too large for uh, the desoldering station. Um, no, it actually fits. 
but uh, these are large planes here, uh, planes of metal. It's uh, difficult to heat up, so I think I'll set up the temperature to uh, 430 degrees. Might have to attack it from the side. And I see they didn't bother to cut the, off uh, the legs, uh, quite long, long legs uh, remaining here. <laughs> this big part of metal just sucks up all uh, the heat and um, the solder tin stays solid. <laughs> I raised the temperature to 470 degrees Celsius. So that sucked away a little bit. Yeah, it's coming off. And we have a winner. <laughs> Just gonna clean up uh, the old solder and uh, make the pads uh, shiny. There's a lot of old sticky uh, gooey flux on this board. So I clean it good and that unfortunately removes that uh, stamp there, but uh, I don't care about that. So, how did I find all the correct capacitors for this? Well, there's actually two ways. First, you can uh, open up the monitor and just look at all the caps. Um, that's, of course, uh, that's of course a lot of work, but if you do it when you are doing the actual uh, recapping then uh, it's not additional work I just opened it a couple of weeks ago then I took a look at uh, some of the caps because I didn't know the dimensions I mean the pin width because I found a list of all the caps online so I, I just opened it up to check and find the correct uh, dimensions um, not the actual uh, farad and uh, voltage values or you can just uh, search online and see if you find lists of capacitors but then you need to be sure that it's the same model as yours and that it's not uh, for example on an uh, American monitor which will have different caps than a European I mean it's different between PAL and NTSC and uh, they have different uh, power supplies this is for 220 volts but the Americans ones are for 110 volts so there will be a difference then another thing you need to be aware of is that some of the capacitors are bipolar on this monitor so uh, you need to make sure you buy the correct type and uh, these are polarized it has a minus on one side and plus on the other side but uh, some of the caps are bipolar and they don't have a plus and minus all right now this looks uh, better than factory so um, yeah i'm gonna solder in uh, the caps now yeah, the minus is marked with um, this dot and the short leg is minus and uh, it's also marked with a plus on this side so it's not possible to do it uh, wrong. I solder in and then I push it out afterwards and uh, make sure it's uh, flush with the board. A little bit of flux. This is a liquid flux so um, yeah. It's like water. Then we have the big bombs.
So this needs a quite high temperature and my soldering iron tip is uh, kind of small and um, I set uh, the solder iron to 410. Which uh, seems to be a little bit too little and uh, I struggle to melt the solder. Okay, now it's there. Just solder one of the pins first while I hold down uh, the PCB. Not finished with that yet, I just want to push it down and make it uh, flush. Yeah, so it came up. So I raised the temperature a little bit. Okay, I think that looks uh, nice. A little more solder on this one. These are big uh, pins and they need a good anchoring and solid electrical connection. <laughs> No need to cut those uh, legs. This is a board that hangs uh, free in the air, so there's no danger uh, in uh, those pins touching anything. All right, then that's taken care of. Just a little bit of cleaning and uh, yeah, the rest of the board looks uh, all right. All right, so now it's time to get out the main board and that's uh, the big one down at the bottom. And as you can see, it's uh, very dusty do uh, down there. And uh, yeah, I think I have to take it out and uh, blow away all that dust. But first need to figure out how to get it out and to remove all the different uh, cables. I took a set of close-up uh, pictures uh, just to document uh, where all the contacts go and uh, <laughs> yeah, their position, their polarity, so that I don't get it wrong. But some of them are quite uh, stuck and hard to get out without using force. <laughs> With all the connectors off, I'm gonna take out the screws. I think there's at least uh, eight screws holding uh, this big board. Also think I have to remove uh, this part here in order to get this board out. I'm not really sure. You see there's these big resistors here. Probably there to uh, bleed off uh, any high voltages. Also one big here. I took off uh, the anode cap. So I think this is free now. Yeah, so that's a lot of stuff. <laughs> so I wonder if I'm uh, gonna remember where to put all uh, the different contacts here <laughs> when I assemble this again. Oh, I really need to remove this part here as well because it's in the way of removing the board. Yeah, now we're talking. I wonder about these uh, thick wires here uh, that goes from the flyback transformer, if it's possible to take them off. I don't want to use force on those, but um, yeah, we don't have to. As long as I can get this board out of the frame here. Oh, this whole piece here needs to come off too, I think. In order to get out that screw, this cover needs to come off. So that's a lot of work for getting this thing out in the free.
But I needed to get this off anyway because I want to clean up all these uh, potentiometers. Uh, now I can reach that screw. Oh my god, this is a mess. <laughs> Come on, and uh, of course a little uh, contact there as well. So this wire needs to come loose from this clip. So I think I will have to uh, look back on my uh, recordings to get this back into its place <laughs> later. But now the thing is out. Almost, there's a little uh, ground wire there. All right, we have one free main board and now I'm gonna take this and blow it free of dust down in my garage, then I'll be back. Okay, that cleaned up nicely and now it's possible to work on this. I'm just cleaning a little bit additionally uh, with some alcohol. Um, yeah, as you can see, there's a lot of uh, dirt stuck to this board. So what's fun with uh, these kinds of analog uh, <laughs> electronics is that uh, I don't know too much about it. There's a lot of uh, stuff here I don't know what is. What's this for example? Maybe it's a big uh, resistor. What is that? It's a delay line it says. I'm not really sure what that is. And the smell of old electronics when you clean these things. All right, it's time to replace the capacitors and uh, I'm only going to replace the electrolyte capacitors because those are the ones that uh, can start failing after many years. These plastic ones, I guess they are not that critical to replace. I'm going to start with the big ones. I'm not going to show the whole process because it's just boring. It's just desoldering and soldering in new caps. Uh, if anything special happens, then I will uh, film that. I got all the caps new from uh, DigiKey and uh, yeah, the price totally for all these caps, I think, was around uh, uh, 50 euros. They are starting to become uh, expensive, especially the large caps. They can cost like 2-3 euros a piece and even more. Yeah, and here's the list uh, of all the caps I bought from DigiKey and uh, yeah, you can see some of the big ones cost a lot. This is uh, prices in Norwegian kroner. Okay, gonna start with those big ones and uh, that should be easy enough. Yeah, it really helps having a <laughs> tool like this. This has, uh, it didn't cost uh, that much but it has been very valuable for me at least I couldn't have done this uh, stuff without one in with the new ones this is a 47 microfarad 160 volts a little bit odd uh, value for uh, my purposes but uh, yeah this is high voltage stuff it's a little bit difficult to lay the board uh, down because uh, those big components Actually, I forgot I'm supposed to clean off uh, the pads before I solder in. <laughs> I mean, it's not a big deal, but it's always a good idea to clean off uh, the old flux. To make sure I don't forget anything, I will mark all the old caps with a <laughs> pen so that I see uh, which I haven't removed. 
also have the list here, so I just cross off uh, as I go. All right, I'm gonna skip over uh, the rest of uh, the recapping because it's boring and I'll spare you for that. Then I'll be back. I came back uh, pretty soon because I wanted to show you something. This cap uh, has apparently uh, leaked. It's wet under it and uh, yeah, some electrolyte juice there. I'm back again and uh, now I'm just gonna show you something peculiar. This cap here, I have uh, dissolved it but uh, I haven't taken it out. It's, um, it has its negative side on the left side but uh, the marking, both on this side with the green dot and there's a plus on that side as well on the back side. So this capacitor is placed the wrong way uh, according to the marking it should be this way however is the marking correct <laughs> i don't know so i have no choice but to solder in a new one exactly the same direction as this one i guess in this case um, the direction doesn't really matter for um, the circuit so a new red one All right, that was all the caps on the main board and uh, doesn't they look nice in red? Most of them are red, some are black. Many of them are uh, much smaller than the original because, uh, yeah, capacitors nowadays are much smaller. However, according to the list, there should be more capacitors and uh, yeah, I'm not really sure, but I think there are some under this cover here, so I'm gonna remove that. So now this little uh, shielding can come off and uh, yeah, that revealed uh, three more electrolytes and a little chip. <laughs> Okay, now I think I'm done. I found one cap more that I forgot to replace, but now everyone is replaced. All right, so I'm gonna clean up uh, the board a little bit. Uh, there's a lot of flux and stuff on the backside. And uh, yeah, after that, I think it's just, uh, yeah, start uh, assembling <laughs> the monitor again. See if I can uh, pull that off. Now before I assemble the monitor, I'm going to clean up these um, uh, potentiometers here. They're dirty both on the knobs and uh, very scratchy inside. So those are just uh, flush with uh, <laughs> a lot of contact cleaner. Which is almost empty now. Then just uh, turn them around a lot. And we have the power switch that uh, needs a little bit of a contact cleaner, I guess. But uh, it's not easy to get anything inside all of these. Hopefully something is uh, pulled into the switch. By the way, this uh, big uh, part here is uh, what makes up, I guess, half the weight of this uh, monitor. Oh, it's heavy. That's a big transformer. All right, it's time to assemble the monitor. Uh, but before I do that, I'm just gonna do a little uh, extra precautionary discharge here. <laughs> also, while I assemble uh, the monitor, I do a little bit of cleaning here and there just to, yeah make everything nice, yeah, full of soot. Oh yeah. <laughs> so there's a little bit dust here and there. I'll try to blow that away. Assembling uh, the monitor, it's just uh, doing uh, <laughs> the thing in reverse order, but uh, yeah, 
it's kind of complicated and all these wires and contacts so I'll do this uh, off cam and then I'll be back. Yeah, now I think all the connectors are in the right place and it wasn't that uh, difficult after all because they are all marked with the letter and there's also corresponding letter on uh, the different PCBs, the contacts on the PCB and uh, it's not possible to uh, put it uh, in the wrong direction. So hopefully everything is correct and I didn't uh, miss anything. I have uh, hooked up uh, the anode cap and uh, yeah, that was a little bit difficult to get in, but I uh, made it eventually. So now I'm gonna actually, just uh, before I uh, screw the cover on, I'm gonna test if it works still. <laughs> All right, the machine is on and now the monitor is uh, live again. Let's turn it on. I hope uh, nothing explodes. Yeah, I can hear high voltage. Yes, look at that. <laughs> that that looks like a very fine and uh, yeah, colorful picture to me. Not on the picture on your video, but uh, for my eyes, it's looking nice. Okay, I didn't uh, hook up the speaker, so I don't hear um, any audio. I'm gonna finish uh, assembling this machine now. I have um, clean off the back panel and took it to my shower and clean clean it real good however the monitor itself i need to clean off with some uh, windows cleaner i think and um, yeah doesn't look that uh, dirty uh, anyway but i'm just gonna go over it it has a little dirt and dust everywhere and the actual crt itself it's kind of dirty in the front this panel with the speaker came out really nice after being cleaned real good. No screws uh, left over except for um, the case here. All right, the monitor looks uh, like brand new, I think. Uh, absolutely uh, nice and clean and uh, yeah, all refreshed with uh, brand new capacitors. <laughs> okay, let me turn it on now and uh, test it a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah, now the sound is good. And the pots are not uh, scratchy anymore. A little bit too much uh, color there. <laughs> nice. Yes, everything seems to be working just fine now. Uh, I'm pretty sure this monitor could benefit from some uh, additional adjustments inside it, but. Uh, I'm not really too confident about doing that. Maybe I'll do that later, but for now it's uh, come out really nice after getting some new electrolyte capacitors. Uh, yeah, that feeling with a real CRT monitor. <laughs> so uh, back in the day when I had a Commodore 64, I could only dream about owning a monitor like this. I had a cheap old uh, 12 volt uh, television that my parents used in their caravan so uh, that was a shared resource <laughs> but that was enough for me but now when I'm uh, an old guy I finally get myself a real Commodore monitor <laughs> Let's play a little summer games then. <laughs> this was one of my favorite games back in the day with the Commodore 64. 
I'm not really sure if I remember how to play this um, <laughs> pole jump <laughs> now, but... Uh... <laughs> okay. The sound is absolutely fantastic, I think. <laughs> Much better than uh, my modern TV, uh, <laughs> for sure. But that's because it has a real big speaker. My modern flat screen TV just has a tiny little fiddly speaker. Ooh. All right, that was it for uh, this video. I, I have recapped uh, my 1701 monitor and uh, it went all right. Actually, it wasn't too difficult either once I just got the, the main board out of the chassis and uh, yeah, figured out where all uh, the contacts and the cables went and uh, yeah, the recapping itself was uh, just a breeze. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching. Hope you'll give me a like and a subscribe because uh, that matters a lot to me. So uh, yeah, thanks a lot and a special thanks to my patrons. See you. Bye bye.